So we are live. You can start. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's indeed a great pleasure to welcome all the dignitaries, honorable ministers, secretaries, DGCSI, directors of CSI Labs, and everyone who has uh, uh, joined this morning to this uh, iConnect event 40 on a very, very important topic called a roadmap for decarbonizing India and uh, opportunities for innovative technologies for sustainable development. Uh, I'm uh, uh, so glad to have you all uh, for this iConnect 40th event and uh, I appreciate your uh, presence uh, uh, this morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you are aware, uh, uh, we started this journey uh, of iConnect on May uh, 12, when the Minister of Science and Technology inaugurated this event. and. Uh, and this is the 40th event that we are uh, having today. And uh, there are 10 research themes and this uh, uh, today's uh, uh, webinar is uh, on uh, civil infrastructure and engineering. And a series of uh, iconic uh, 75 industry connect events uh, are being organized to showcase the achievements in the various uh, SNT areas. And uh, these events would be uh, you know, a, a befitting tribute to uh, the pride and prestige uh, associated in celebrating the 75 years of Indian independence. Uh, the SNT ministry intends to draw upon the rich expertise and competence uh, from government as well as industry leaders who have uh, significantly contributed to the economic growth of the nation. And uh, the iConnect event will uh, definitely include a variety of uh, programs such as mega industry conferences, plenary talks, ex exhibitions, B2B meetings. And this is how uh, this uh, iConnect 40 event has been planned uh, on a very, very important topic. And, uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, the, uh, the proceedings uh, uh, in, the, in the session will definitely benefit all of uh, us uh, and whosoever is present is attending this uh, webinar uh, today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, decarbonization aims uh, to drop the exponentially accruing carbon footprint attributed to, to modern society to fundamentally restore and recent planetary systems that society is attributed to. And uh, the built environment, and particularly the, the, the urban uh, uh, built environment, uh, needs to be designed by following approaches that uh, uh, include a reduction of uh, embodied and operational carbon and also circularity of materials, products, and spaces. And uh, the UN Climate Change Conference 2021, India has announced a target of uh, net zero emissions by 2070. And I'm sure India will reduce its uh, projected carbon emissions by 1 billion tons and carbon intensity to of its economy by about 45% by 2030. And in India, about half of the buildings and homes that are yet to be built uh, by 2050, building sector, or particularly the building technologies, have a significant uh, uh, role to, to play. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the net zero emissions built environment by 2050 or 2070 requires a lot of uh, strategies, a lot of technologies, and to, to name a few, we need to have low embodied, robust materials and assemblies, and amenable to circularity and planetary ecosystem services. Number two, we need to have low carbon, region specific, durable, and disaster resilient building technologies with cost effective, passive, and building physics uh, principles, uh, utilization resource efficient uh, active technologies and uh, CSIR is one of the very few organizations in the country uh, wherein a lot of frontline uh, institutions are working in this domain. And number three, uh, building to grid community or neighborhood scale integration of uh, 
renewable sources of energy to harness demand flexibility and providing equitable reliable and uh, energy access so, so that means uh, now this is another domain when we need to have you know uh, these uh, uh, great community connected uh, uh, integration of uh, renewable sources of energy and number four we need to have you know solar thermal uh, whether it is a heating or cooling solutions or technologies that will have significant market in the in the in the coming years and uh, finally the carbon capture storage and utilization innovation uh, innovative technologies for building sector where cement has a bigger uh, carbon footprint and generate about about eight uh, percent of the global emissions i think this is going to be a game changer and many reports uh, uh, publications published in the recent past indicate that climate goals will not be met uh, without carbon capture storage and utilization wherein we uh, we at csir have taken a lead uh, in uh, developing you know technologies uh, for building sector and i'm sure my colleagues uh, my experts uh, will share uh, insight on the the work that has been done uh, or that is being done or that is uh, you know expected to be done in the coming years so with this uh, uh, brief uh, introduction uh, uh, I will, uh, you know, before inviting our uh, keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Rakesh Kumar, uh, who is the uh, former director, CSIR Niri Nagpur, who was there for, uh, five, you know, as director, uh, May 2016 to April 2020, uh, 21, before being uh, designated as an officer on special duty at CSIR headquarters, coordinating CCUS and Net Zero India program. And uh, Dr. Rakesh Kumar needs no introduction, but uh, uh, those who are new to, uh, to him, uh, he has a vast experience in all fields of uh, environmental science, engineering, and especially air pollution control and management, uh, urban air quality monitoring, emission inventory, and things like that. And uh, uh, Dr. Kumar has received many awards for his outstanding contribution in the field of environmental science and engineering. And among uh, notable uh, ones are Commonwealth Commission Award UK in the year 1994, Environmental Leadership Award by US Asia Environmental Partnership and US Aid for the year 2005. And he has also been awarded the largest number of technology transfer for low cost wastewater treatment called Phytroid for the year 2012 and also given the worst week award for the year 2012. Some of other honors are your Kyoshi Think Ecology Award for the year 2015, two technology award for development of environmental friendly technologies in the year 2021 for uh, RENEU as an institute drain treatment and for green crackers uh, in 2021 for, by CSIR. Dr. Kumar has about 15 patents for on pollution control devices, including three international patents and published more than 180 uh, national and international peer-reviewed uh, SCI publications and 90 papers in national and international conferences. With this uh, uh, brief introduction, let us big, you know, welcome Dr. Rakesh Kumar by offering him a big round of applause. Over to you, Dr. Rakesh Kumar, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashok, uh, for a wonderful introduction. And uh, I was very glad to also hear uh, everything that you, that was to be said in the beginning of this seminar, which is a very important sector which we are talking about. And one important thing which came out very clearly is that India is not built as yet. It is probably more than 50% is yet to be built because the growth is also taking place. Yes, and therefore, yes. the challenges in the sector that you all work in is much more. So uh, the limited time that you have given me, I'll try to bring in the perspective of what has been uh, what has been discussed internationally across the world, and also bring it out specifically for building sector that we are discussing it today. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more intense discussion as we go ahead in, in this particular uh, subject. Uh, I would uh, basically try to highlight how the recent Summary for policymakers, which were uh, which were finalized by IPCC, were 
uh, me and Dr. Anjan were part of negotiating team from India. Uh, we looked at uh, this sector very, very carefully, and it was very interesting to note how the world is viewing the whole thing. So just give me a second. I'll uh, uh, get my few slides up, and then we can start right away. Can you see the slide? Uh, yes, sir. You can put it on full screen mode, sir. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Thank you. So when we're looking at uh, climate change and decarbonization, of course, uh, uh, there are a lot of things which can be done uh, by various other means. But there, the discussion that we are holding it today is from the demand side implications. So it's like what people want it in, on an immediate terms, 10 years, 20 years, and 30 years. And that is what we'll actually count in terms of steps that we are trying to take and steps that we are initiating for ourselves as we go ahead. So decarbonization word, I will not repeat it here, but it is basically trying to uh, understand the process of reducing carbon. And in this case, mainly carbon dioxide is considered, but in, in a larger goal of net zero, we are talking about almost all the greenhouse gases, six greenhouse gases we talk about. So we uh, ideally what we are trying to understand is that we should have uh, anything that we do should have low emission when we talk about it. So when we look at industry per se and building sector is connected with many other industry, which is part of it. And when we when, when we when we start looking the coordination and their value chain um, uh, to understand what are the mitigation options of it. Uh, in most of the discussion, um, we we are unable to take the whole of it. Uh, as, as I said, uh, the whole supply chain, starting from the mining to processing to transportation and finally is used. And in, in this case, it can also be, uh, you know, when when the use useful life is over, what do we do? So when we look at all of these things together, we are talking about demand management as the first starting point. Energy and materials efficiency, anything that we use uh, in any of the systems, what are the efficiencies relating to that? How the circular material flows takes place? And for each of these three uh, things, how what are the abatement technology which can be used? And finally, uh, anything which can be uh, changed in, in terms of transformational changes in the production processes, um, can we also do adoption of new and alternate production processes? And when we do this, uh, we will find that uh, anything which is being done in uh, many other countries may not exactly happen in our country as well. And all of these principles will actually change from regions to regions and place to place and materials to materials. So even within India, uh, the kind of material that we use in building sector varies quite a bit. And, and that's where uh, there is no one single formula which we should be adopting it or we should be propagating it when we go ahead. A very clear indication and discussion which has come in summary for policymaker in IPCC document, which got released in the month of April, is talking about potential and sequencing of mitigation strategies. It will actually vary depending upon the city's land use, spatial form, and developmental level. Now, these, as I said, definition and spread of the language will change from country to country. And I would say within the country also it will change. So when we talk about the real challenge, what we have established in older cities, which are currently being almost retrofitted if you as you go ahead. So when we, when we want to do something in this case, we have to look at how efficiently we can improve repurpose or re retrofit building stock with low materials and lower energy footprint. And we do targeted infilling in the sense that wherever it is needed, uh, we do that. We, we shouldn't be doing it in a, in a way that uh, one, one size fits all, and that will be uh, a recipe for the disaster in this case. Besides the building aspect of it, the urbanization processes must get supported from non-motorized and public transport. And what is important here is when we talk about uh, traditional non-motorized transport, which used to be having, you know, cycle and pedestrian pathways and things like that, all of these will require uh, building related reforms uh, and uh, people, people to understand that walking is going to be the more powerful uh, process in which uh, you will be able to mitigate climate change as you go ahead. And all of these will happen only when we have financial status and legal reforms which take place. 
So when we talk about uh, mitigation in urban areas and planning, uh, we have many big cities we all know of, metro cities, which sometimes seems to be that we cannot do anything because they have become too big to handle anything. But uh, the real worry should be uh, more than, uh, uh, you know, every every state that you take, almost 40 to 50 percent of all taluka places, urban places are changing and they're changing very fast. The current urbanization uh, in, in many of the states is more than 50 percent and some of them which are in 30 percent, uh, such as Jharkhand, UP, Madhya Pradesh, uh, will also cross 50 percent as we go ahead. So when we do this, um, we will have to worry about co-locating jobs and housings together. And that is where the challenge comes that how the architects of future uh, are looking at compact urban form. And when we say urban compact form is not only in terms of the material to be used, but the energy which will get used and which will, which will be uh, eco-friendly enough that it does not create health impacts. So when we talk about all of these rapidly growing cities, we are discussing about leapfrogging or transitioning to low emission technologies, uh, which will which will be through a smart monitoring and management. For the newer and emerging cities, we are talking about energy efficient infrastructure and services and people centered urban design. Uh, when I say people centered urban design, it means every city or every part of the city must have environmental services. We, we can, in, in many uh, terminologies, uh, people are also talking about environmental infrastructure. What I mean is the sewerage system, the water supply system, the road, uh, road network, uh, the electricity supply systems, um, you know, flood resilient infrastructure in place, the way we design our stormwater drains, uh, the way we can evacuate people, disaster management planning, all of these actually become part of this urban design. And only when we do all of these together, uh, chances are that we'll meet that uh, real goal that we are talking about. So in, in, in our situation, I would say the real challenge is what do we do with older cities? And that's where we need huge efforts, where, where we need to understand that large urban poor, there are cities where we have 60 to 70% people who are actually poor. And most of the planning when, when it is being done and uh, the housing stocks when it is being designed, uh, it is being designed for those who can afford. So these, these urban poor, how we can take care of them in terms of the building design processes where energy, water and space is looked at all, all of them together. And the, for the newer cities, of course, uh, we, we can do it in a, in a smarter way because we have enough experience, not only in India, but elsewhere as well. Some of the numbers uh, that has come come in uh, for uh, urban areas is that in 2019, the global direct and indirect emissions, which we call offset generation of electricity, heat and emissions from cement and steel, uh, which is used in construction and renovation, not digital being, buildings are about 55%, have shown 55% increase with respect to 1990, and residential building 50% increase uh, when we compare with 1990. And that's that's a big area of reform. The people at uh, at at any place who are in the technology space and and and, and building space, uh, they need to be looking at this uh, this number uh, with uh, a challenge. How do we do this? So when we go ahead with this, uh, the renovation rates that we are talking about for retrofitting buildings, uh, this is this is the most challenging thing that we do, particularly for urban poor forms. The bigger buildings, which, which are formally done, designed well, it's much more easier to do. Similarly, uh, particularly country like India, uh, the largest share of mitigation potential is going to be new building because we have, we we are going to have more and more newer uh, stocks which are needed. And for developed countries, uh, the highest mitigation potential is going to be for existing buildings. So this is a this is a part of uh, a, a very interesting paragraph, uh, interesting figure which has been given in the summary for policymakers, which is specifically for building sector, and it identifies uh, some areas which says a wide demand for energy services. It, it you know mind, mind the words which are being used a wide demand for energy services, meaning your building has to be uh, designed in a way that it need it gets the light 
or it doesn't need any more additional energy from outside for lighting and heating purposes. Efficient lighting appliances, equipment, new building with high energy performance, on-site renewable production and use, like if solar can be used on the rooftop, on the building surfaces, uh, improving existing building stock, enhanced use of wood product as we go ahead. And what you see on the right hand side is are the are the cost of technology which are being now touted as if it they can possibly be used. Now, cost of these technologies are reducing very, very fast. And more and more R and D and engineering solutions when they are brought in, the chances are these costs are going to become even lower. The the lowest one which have been identified uh, could be in, in less than twenty dollars, which will mitigate in less than twenty dollars you can mitigate almost one ton of carbon dioxide equivalent. Some of the other areas which comes in, which is also connected with the building sector, but it is also part of industry. We are talking about energy efficiency, material efficiency, enhanced recycling. If if I can get material from the building, which can go for recycling, uh, for for example, uh, CND waste, which is being uh, now used in some places for bringing a new new material out altogether for used uh, for for using it in the new building stocks. Fuel switching, uh, no brainer. Here uh, we are talking about uh, all the renewables here. We may, uh, as we go ahead, we will have more and more of bioenergy and hydrogen, uh, which will add into this. And if you see here, uh, this has got the highest potential for mitigation uh, as we go ahead in this case. Carbon capture with utilization and CCS, that is direct carbon capture and storage, uh, is going to be the key thing, which Dr. Ashok also mentioned it, without which um, not only India, but world will find it very difficult to meet that net zero target uh, that we are talking about. In other cases, cementitious material substitution, reduction of non-CO2 emissions are few other areas. And as we go ahead with our urbanization and buildings, um, when people start living in, we will have uh, uh, climate forcing methane emissions. And how do we deal with it? How do we deal with solid waste? And how do we deal with wastewater? Because these are also the areas where our potential uh, from the residential zone is going to be significant. Some of the examples which have been used elsewhere across the world, uh, people put some targets, and that's what we need to be doing it in our country as well. Uh, Ministry, have, Ministry of Environment and Forest has already formed certain task groups, and it is identifying these targets. So when I, when I talk about decarbonization of industries, we are talking about 12 to 15% of material use industries must come from recycling. One can have a higher target. Uh, Companies, specifically industry from textile, electronics, and plastic, should receive aid. Government will need to help them to modernize their processes and stimulate circular production. Uh, otherwise, uh, the, the, some of these these, uh, these these industries on their own possibly will not be able to modernize themselves. And if construction-related is issues, as I said earlier as well, that retrofitting of buildings, which account for 40 to 45 percent of energy consumption need major attention and a lot of innovation, not only from R&D sector, but also from architects and, and the people who understand so, social aspect of urban forms. So when we talk about sustainable urban development, we'll need sustainable material, energy efficient construction processes. Sorry about the spelling here. And lastly, uh, the energy. Uh, energy decarbonization has been discussed quite a bit and it's being done across the sector. And India is one country which is which has actually taken a good lead and shown uh, its leadership in the energy sector as we go ahead. At CSIR, uh, we have already initiated cluster for uh, carbon capture and utilization and storage processes. Uh, these are the three processes which, which can possibly be broadly taken, uh, uh, capture, utilization, and sequestration. Uh, we have point and non-point uh, use uh, sources which are coming, uh, it can be captured. It can be utilized through conversion and non-conversion. Non-conversion is like, it, it, can it be directly used in food processing? In conversion, there are may, various methods of mineralization, uh, chemicals, or biological processes. Uh, it depends on, so there are various CSR laboratories who, which can possibly be doing almost all of it. And on the lower side, as you see, is sequestration. We are talking about geological storage, enhanced oil recovery, oceanic sequestration, and terrestrial sequestration. Again. Uh, there are many CSR labs which are working in this area, and uh, as as an unit, it will be able to make a big difference. 
So this is uh, a, a thing which has been in principle approved that uh, we will have cluster of excellence across uh, across CSR and we will call it for net zero India uh, goal. We are we are actually looking at the the goal uh, 2030 industries goal as the primary focus. And as we go ahead and do it well, uh, we will possibly be participating in a in a better way for 20, 2020 net zero goal as well. So at the end, I would just want to uh, close here by saying that India and developing countries need to do more and more in renewable energy space, which actually feeds into the overall industrial landscape. And India has seen uh, uh, the successes and shown leadership. The R&D and, and, and studies related to global practices must be to address the changing landscape, uh, not only in particular location, but across and that's why the Indian scientific and uh, in engineering group uh, must be looking at how how the world is looking at this this subject and how are they addressing it. So when we talk about climate change debate uh, is in another angle which should be simultaneously addressed for sustainable growth of the country and it should happen in almost all sectors. Uh, I'm happy that is being discussed with building sector today, uh, but I would say this is something which actually cuts across any sector. Uh, and you name it and it's, it's there in everything. So as we go ahead, uh, as I said me in the beginning, the window of action has actually not very, very narrowed that if we don't do anything before 2030, the, the target of 1.5 degree centigrade uh, limit that we are talking about will become very difficult to achieve. Um, I'm uh, very happy that uh, CBRI and uh, Dr. Ashok and his team invited me today. Um, I look forward to more intense discussion as we go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your insightful uh, deliberation and lecture. Uh, some of the important uh, uh, highlights of your lecture include, you know, the retrofitting of uh, existing building stock. Uh, sir, uh, I would just like to highlight here is that, you know, we at CSR, CBRI took up this challenge of, uh, uh, you know, green retrofit uh, strategies uh, development uh, in the year uh, say 2012 to 2015, and wherein we have tried to quantify the uh, the energy you know uh, saving or the thermal load reduction to the tune of about 40 to 5, 45 percent just by adopting passive measures and also using building physics principles. Uh, this is one of the very important area which you mentioned, sir. The second important area which you mentioned about uh, uh, improvement in the existing building stock of uh, urban areas, particularly uh, the housing for urban poor. So here also I would like to uh, state that we at CSR, CBRA have developed uh, standardized plans and designs uh, for improving not only thermal performance, energy performance, but also the disaster resilience with the, with the several technologies. And these, uh, these are ready for deployment and to be used uh, by, by the country. And you mentioned about uh, 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 leapfrogging frogging or uh, transitioning to local uh, or low carbon emissions technologies uh, and uh, uh, some of the technologies like CND waste blocks or, or low energy blocks. So here also I would like to uh, mention that uh, uh, recently we have uh, uh, come out uh, with uh, several such materials and technologies and uh, uh, showcased in uh, uh, construction demolition, uh, construction uh, technology demo park and one uh, of such building is low energy buildings wherein we have demonstrated uh, not only blocks uh, made of uh, CMD waste but also uh, the ECA and uh, AAC and uh, geothermal uh, sorry geo uh, 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 geopolymer concrete uh, uh, con uh, columns and things like that so so uh, I, I am I am very much thankful to you sir for your uh, wonderful presentation and uh, we'll look forward to have uh, more uh, interactions uh, at CSR level where we uh, uh, work uh, closely with you in the area of uh, 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 carbon capture, replication and storage. Thank you, sir. Right, thank uh, you. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Namaskar. Uh, 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 I'll uh, now move to the second uh, talk because we do not have time for questions. Uh, uh, those who have questions, they can uh, uh, write in the chat box. And at the end of uh, uh, this uh, 
lectures, we'll have a question answer session. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we move to the second keynote lecture uh, by uh, Dr. Sorodi Gupta, uh, who is an assistant professor at the Center for Sustainable Technologies at IASC Bangalore. And uh, he leads uh, material engineering research, innovation, and application lab called Material, which focuses on uh, additive uh, manufacturing and development of low carbon uh, building materials. Uh, and he was awarded a PhD from uh, uh, National University of Singapore, followed by postdoctoral research at the University of New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. Uh, friends, uh, uh, he is the recipient of Discovery Early Career Award by the Australian Research Council, and uh, he has founded and currently leading a bio-based material technology company based in Singapore, which, which is aiming at commercialization of uh, carbon sequestering building products. So uh, uh, you, I'm sure uh, this talk is going to be very, very interesting for all of us. And uh, uh, with, a, with a extensive research uh, experience in the area of uh, self-healing, bio-based building materials and carbon uh, sequestration, we, where he has published more than 30 uh, peer-reviewed international journal articles and uh, about 10 uh, te technical articles in the conference proceedings, three book chapters and a patent. I'm sure uh, this is going to be a, a very interesting talk. Uh, Dr. Saurabh Gupta, over to you, and uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ashok, for the nice introduction. And it was uh, very heartening to see that both you and Dr. Rakesh have emphasized on carbon capture technologies, and that will definitely be an important technology to bring up uh, for meeting our uh, decarbonization targets. So today, what I'm going to do is I'll share some snippets from my uh, research activities over the past few years in the idea of low carbon materials and additive uh, manufacturing. Uh, so I'll share uh, my slides uh, and then we can start. Just a second. Okay, um, so I'll go to full screen mode. Uh, is it visible? Yes, I can put it on full screen mode. Uh, it is showing in full screen mode here. Uh, you unshare it and reshare. That would be better. Okay. So I'm sharing from window, then the PPT. Yeah. Yeah. Then full screen. Um, but I guess maybe some error somewhere. Um, you can just double click uh, with that. Uh, there, that is 59% written. So you can do that full screen mode. Yeah. Um, okay. If the slides are visible, maybe for the sake or, of time, I'll just. No. Uh, uh, otherwise, you can increase this uh, 59 percentage to maybe around uh, 65 or uh, plus percent. You know that. Uh, okay. Okay. That would be easy for yes. No. No. Little bit less. Little bit less. Yes. I think this is 60 percent. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. So let's uh, continue. Um, so yeah. Uh, my name is Dr. Saradeep, and I am an assistant prof at the CST Center for Sustainable Technologies and in Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. And um, uh, here are some of the uh, research areas that we are currently working on at the materials group that um, Dr. Ashok has already mentioned. So we are looking at utilization of inorganic and bio-based wastes um, as resources to develop low carbon materials. We have also focused on development of cement free binders, for example, alkali activated materials and magnesium cement um, for developing uh, durable concrete. At the same time, we're looking at the carbon capture technologies and how it um, influences the durability and mechanical properties of cementitious composites. Uh, very recently, we have also made our foray into additive manufacturing 
um, using polymer printing to develop new shapes and geometries, and also in the area of um, concrete 3D printing. So first, all, uh, first of uh, all, I would like to um, share some of our findings or some of our progresses that we have made in the area of carbon capture and how it um, influences um, the, the sequestration potential and the properties of um, composites. Something we have to take note here is that when you are talking about carbon capture and sequestration, it depends on a number of factors. For example, the composition of materials, uh, for example, the binder used, the mix design and so on. Um, the rate of diffusion in the material, for example, which will depend on the density of the composite. Because to capture CO2 or rather to maximize the capturing potential, there should be a passage or diffusion of CO2 from the immediate environment into the blocks so that it can be stored um, in, a, in a stable form. So as we move on, we have, I'm going to share um, more uh, on the technology development aspect uh, of this. But first of all, why do we um, need to focus on that? Um, as Dr. Ashok and Dr. Rakesh have both um, uh, rightly mentioned that we need to reduce the embodied carbon of the new building stocks that we are planning. And we have already set ourselves a target to reduce emission by about 50% by 2030 and fully decarbonize by 2070. So we just have about uh, eight years from now to reach a 2030 milestone and about another 30 to 35 years to fully develop technologies to develop low embodied carbon uh, building materials. So the carbon emission is basically, um, you know, comes from several stages of a construction project. For example, the material extraction, preparation, construction phase, and the operational phase of the building. If we can reduce the carbon emission from the um, uh, uh, material development phase, we can reduce substantial portion of the total carbon footprint associated with our building um, uh, building stocks. To know what needs to be done in the next decade or so, we also need to see um, what is happening globally and how other countries are also targeting this um, technology development of reducing carbon emission of building materials. Um, I had the privilege of advising uh, CSIRO, which is the scientific body of Australia's um, Australian government, and they came up with a CO2 utilization roadmap uh, in 2021, and they have set a few um, uh, short-term and long-term goals, how to approach this problem. And something that has um, come up repeatedly in this roadmap is that of utilizing CO2 capture from industrial flue gas streams to cure concrete, to develop um, uh, carbonate aggregates, and also to um, sequester the CO2 captured in stable mineral form, right? So it, it's a long way, but definitely we have to get going uh, because as uh, European Union at the recently concluded COP26 have repeatedly mentioned that we cannot um, let nature pay for the anthropogenic carbon dioxide emission. So there should be a technology framework and followed by policy framework to facilitate this technology and transfer these technologies from the research to um, implementation. There is another challenge that we face in India and um, similarly in many developing countries is that of CO2 emission from the agricultural sector. We all know that CO2 emission from the ordinary Portland cement manufacturing is quite substantial. About one kg of CO2 is emitted per kg of cement produced. But at the same time, the CO2 that is emitted due to stubble burning um, from farm fields and from other agricultural activities also create um, quite a bit of emission if we look at it, right? So how do we merge these two problems? Can we use or can we recover resource from this bio-based material stock, um, capture carbon and sequester it in building materials? We are all aware of the recent landfill fire in New uh, Delhi. And when you read the reports, you will see that much of it was caused due to uh, very fast propagation of the fire through the wood or bio-based uh, wastes that were discarded in the landfill. So it is also an environmental risk to keep on landfilling because this will lead to this kind of events uh, in the near future. If we look at the um, global scenario, how many countries have um, uh, tried to address this problem is by constructing incinerators or rather we can call it waste to energy plants. So basically it is a mix of different kind of waste that they feed into the incinerator. And then of course the residual heat is used to generate electricity. But we need to ask ourselves whether this technology alone is sustainable and sufficient 
um, to, to approach the problem of reduced landfilling and also to prevent such environmental risk. According to some reports published uh, by a group of German authors, they have said that one kg of mixed waste incineration will lead to about 0.7 to 1.2 kg of CO2 emission. And that is almost the same order of the CO2 emission that comes out from cement manufacturing. Right. So although it reduces the amount of waste that is generated and definitely an effective solid waste management strategy, but we cannot rely on this technology alone. So we need to develop some other material formulation or other um, uh, an approach whereby we can use this kind of bio-based materials as additives to reduce the consumption of um, uh, CO2 intensive binders. So I'm sharing with you a schematic um, and that is something that has driven my research for the past few years on carbon capture and sequestration. For example, the CO2 that is emitted, emitted from incinerator plants or even from CO2 manufacturing can actually be captured, although there are certain challenges, for example, how do we um, get rid of the socks like SO2 and NO2 and really have high purity of CO2 that we can capture. And the captured CO2 can be used to cure the concrete blocks or rather the prefabricated concrete blocks. And through diffusion, um, let me turn on the pointer. Okay, no. okay, and through diffusion, the CO2 can enter the matrix, react with the hydration product, for example, calcium hydroxide and calcium silicate hydrate, and get deposited in the pores as carbonate minerals. And here are some scanning electron micrograph photos um, uh, we have uh, taken last year uh, using CO2 capturing technology in lightweight concrete. And you can see this kind of depositions inside the pores of lightweight foam concrete. These are basically the mineral carbonates that have been formed due to reaction of CO2 with the hydration product. But something we should take note here is that CaCO3 or calcium carbonate can be formed from carbonation of calcium hydroxide and calcium silicate hydrate. But we really want to minimize the carbonation of calcium silicate hydrate so that we avoid the problem of instability or degradation of the binder gel, which is associated with loss of strength. So maximizing CO2 capture through carbonation of calcium hydroxide should be the preferable pathway when you are talking about um, carbon capture in cementitious building materials. Okay. So um, as I said um, in the initial stage uh, of the presentation is that uh, the carbon capturing efficiency really depends on the porous pathway or the diffusion pathway of CO2. And one of the hypotheses that we had uh, is that if we can make lightweight porous concrete for lightweight construction, can we actually improve or enhance the carbon sequestration potential? And how we went about this problem is by integrating bio-based building materials together with accelerated carbonation technology in cementitious composites. So here is a product called biochar, which is basically produced from gasification or pyrolysis of bio-based waste. And this can be different kind of wastes, for example, agricultural waste, food waste, and wood waste, and so on. And I'm often asked that, well, what is the difference of biochar with charcoal, like charcoal that you get um, you know, off the shelf uh, in, in the market? There is a difference. The difference is that biochar has to be produced under a certain set of conditions. Why? Because the conditions, for example, temperature, heating rate, and pressure, they will influence the development of the porous network in the biochar. And these pores play a very unique role that they have very high affinity for carbon dioxide and other such gases, and they can be captured through adsorption in the micro pores of biochar, right? And this whole process can give us three components, biochar, bio oil, gas, and of course, the residual heat. And if we take into account the utilization of all the three components, the whole process can be carbon negative. Um, there are several life cycle analysis studies that have been done on this. For example, uh, Ulf, uh, 2010 uh, from Germany, um, you know, he has reported that about 12% of global anthropogenic emission can be reduced by using biochar as a soil enhancer and a filtration material. Similarly, there are other reports showing that about 870 kg CO2 equivalent but ton of the feedstock, that is the parent biomass, can be captured by using biochar as a building and filtration material. So besides being um, 
uh, uh, solid waste management strategy, it can also reduce the carbon emission that is associated because we are capturing the carbon in the structure of biochar instead of turning into ash and reducing uh, and emitting the carbon to the environment. So just to give you some idea on um, how it looks like, I mean, uh, then we can get a feel of how the whole mechanism of carbon capture takes place in the pores of biochar. If we look at it under ACM, we can see a lot of these macro pores which are inherited from the vascular structure of the plant body. But we can very easily grind it into very fine particles or make it a very fine filler which is desired for use in cementitious composite. Although we cannot see a lot of pores in this, these particles contain a huge amount or substantial fraction of micro and meso pores less than 5 nanometer. And these pores are super active in capturing CO2 and storing it through adsorption um, when put in building materials. The properties of biochar will vary quite a bit depending on the feedstock and how we make it. So I'm giving some range of these numbers corresponding to each property. The surface area can be very high, varying between 200 meters square per gram to 400 meters square per gram. And higher the surface area, higher is the affinity for CO2 capture. And similarly, the carbon uh, content of biochar will also depend on the feedstock or the carbon content of the feedstock and it, it can vary between 70 to 90 percent and the oxygen to carbon ratio which is a measure of stability can vary between 0.12 to 0.22. But the question when um, it comes to bio-based building material is that how stable it is because we have seen that we if we use the raw biomass feedstock there are a lot of durability problems because they are not stable in the highly alkaline environment. So we did um, this XRD investigation to see the decomposition of different sugary phases or polysaccharide phases in the biomass at different temperature. And as you can see from this um, signature of raw biomass, there is a broad hump and a sharper peak which correspond to cellulose and poorly crystalline polysaccharides and hemicellulose. And as we prepare biochar at 500 degree, there is a broad hump form uh, eliminating both these peaks and which means that both cellulose and the sugary components have completely decomposed. And this kind of biochar will remain stable in the alkaline environment. Spokus in 2010, he published a chart uh, relating the predicted half-life, or you can call it the stability of biochar, to that of the oxygen to C molar ratio or carbon molar ratio. And based on that, the wood-based biochar produced at 500 degree can, be, um, can have a half-life of about um, 100 to 1,000 years, right? And this will, of course, depend on the carbon content of the biochar, which is dependent on the preparation condition. So how does it perform when it is added to lightweight building materials? And here we have developed different um, densities of material ranging from 1,150 kg per meter cube that you see here to about 1,450 kg per meter cube containing fly ash and fly ash and silica fume. And this part of the chart shows the mix of similar density, but with biochar in it. And from this, we see that adding biochar can actually enhance the carbon capturing potential, but that does not take into account the carbon that is present in the biochar. So if we add that, that can actually enhance it furthermore by about another five to 7%. And this carbon capturing potential was um, investigated using XRD and thermogravimetric analysis technique. And something interesting that has come up here is the distribution of carbonate decomposed at different temperature range in thermogravimetric analysis. For example, 550 to 720 corresponds to the decomposition of unstable carbonates or poorly crystalline carbonates, if I may call it. And then calcite, which is the most stable form of uh, carbonate, will decompose between 720 to 1000 degrees. And adding biochar shows that the fraction of carbonate contributed by calcite increases compared to that of the mix without biochar, which is shown by this um, gray infill um, uh, bar, right? And that is something which is desired because we do not want the unstable carbonates formed from the decomposition of calcium silicate hydrate. And from even the XRD signature, we can see that the peaks associated with calcite has increased substantially after carbonation of biochar mixed lightweight um, paste compared to that of the sealed curing. And we have also um, cross-validated the data with that of thermogravimetry that the decomposition of calcium hydroxide or the reduction of calcium hydroxide is higher in biochar mixed um, lightweight uh, mortar compared to that of without biochar, which means that 
more and more calcite is being contributed due to the action of biochar and the contribution from the decomposition of binder will reduce. And uh, why is this? Is it so? Uh, that's very interesting is because the pores of biochar uh, will act as nucleation site for the precipitation of calcium hydroxide, which will turn into calcite and other carbonation products inside the pores of this biochar. And biochar is a filler, at least from wood waste uh, biochar is a filler. It doesn't have any pozzolanic action and therefore the contribution of calcite also increases. And we also have to take into account the standards or the um, recommended uh, strength that we need to achieve after carbonation. And very comfortably, we can achieve a strength of 5 megapascal and above up to about 10 to 12 megapascal after carbonation of biochar mixes, which satisfies the recommendation as per Indian standard uh, 2185. And also we have seen that after carbonation, the shrinkage of biochar admixed uh, mortar has reduced by about 15% compared to that of the control mortar, which is good because we have less likelihood of cracking and other durability problems with reduction in shrinkage. So there are a few publications that have come up and this was uh, uh, partly this was a project funded by the Australian Research Council and part of the work was done at IAC using the startup grant that I've got. And you can refer to these publications for further details. And I have, uh, we have also explored the carbon sequestration in normal mortar and also using biochar as a carrier for carbon dioxide being mixed into the cement. So all this can be found in these um, publications. The other area that we are working on is that of shape optimization and geometry optimization for developing lightweight composites using additive manufacturing technique. So for instance, we have used polymer 3D printing to come up with different spatial shapes, for example, gyroid of different wall thicknesses, and we have reduced the mass by optimizing the geometry of the material. And we have loaded it under displacement control uh, setup to measure the load and the deflection that comes out of it. And something interesting that has come up is that um, by using this uh, uh, polymer of ABS with different wall thicknesses, for example, six millimeter and two millimeter, we can have a more ductile response compared to that of a mo solid mortar with of similar density, of about 1,600 kg per meter cube. Right. So this is yet another way that we can reduce the amount of material that is needed for lightweight material, lightweight construction uh, through geometry optimization and using um, additive manufacturing technique. Um, recently, we have started working on 3D printable binder development using um, concrete 3D printing. And we recently got uh, a gantry-based printer here at our lab. And we are looking at different kinds of viscosity modifiers to come up with printable mixes. And this mixes uh, does not have any cement. It's a cement-free mix. And we are using a special kind of viscosity modifier that gives very high um, shape stability um, and retention. So further work is being pursued in this area, and this will be another way to come up with efficient and more productive um, construction and hopefully reduce the CO2 footprint during the construction phase. And coming to the end um, of this uh, talk, I would like to share that we are also taking up effort to um, organize a national workshop on low carbon construction materials and green building uh, at IAC, and that is scheduled to happen in November, between 22nd and 24th November, and different aspects of low carbon material technology and green building systems and architecture uh, will be discussed. So if you are interested, feel free to reach out to me, um, and I would uh, really like to see some participation uh, from CBRI and other industry partners who may be present here today. So with that, I conclude, and thank you very much for inviting me to this. And um, I want to see some questions coming up. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gupta, for a wonderful presentation of yours. And I am sure uh, each one of us has been uh, enriched by the, the kind of work that uh, has been carried out by you in ISA Bangalore and elsewhere. Uh, your, your, you know, uh, uh, particularly the research areas on uh, 3D printable cement free materials development. Uh, and uh, biochar as a carbon sequestration material are worth appreciating and i'm sure uh, the 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 problems highlighted by dr rakesh kumar uh, and uh, the answers given by you i think uh, they are going to uh, you know 
act as a as a uh, as a, a milestone uh, for the building industry. And I'm sure uh, the de uh, development of technologies for the for the uh, CO2 utilization in building construction uh, uh, will have a future in the in the in the in the, in the coming years. And uh, we see a lot of. Uh, uh, development of technologies for CO2 sequestration in not only precast building components, but also uh, like, you know, ready mixed concrete or recycled aggregates uh, from CND waste uh, and also uh, artificial aggregates uh, from uh, uh, carbon sequestration and things like that. And I'm sure our colleagues will uh, definitely share some of their works uh, when they are presenting uh, on some of these uh, Topics. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gupta, for uh, uh, your wonderful presentation. Uh, we look forward to have uh, a future collaboration with IAC and with you in particular in the area of uh, uh, CO2 utilization in building construction. And uh, we'll have question answer session at the end of uh, this. So please uh, uh, tune, uh, uh, no, stay tuned, uh, uh, right? So uh, thank okay. you very thank much. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, we move to our now our second part, which is uh, 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 industry uh, specific presentations, wherein our colleagues have uh, developed uh, some technologies, materials, uh, and uh, they are going to uh, highlight uh, uh, those uh, in uh, say another uh, thirty or thirty-five minutes from now. And uh, to start with, uh, I am inviting. Professor S.K. Singh, who is the senior principal scientist at CSR, CBR, and uh, he has uh, a lot of experience in the area of uh, waste to wealth and uh, has developed several uh, such materials, published uh, a number of publications and papers, and he has also received several awards and honors. Uh, so with this brief introduction, uh, I will now hand over to Professor S.K. Singh. Thank you, sir. CSIR, CBRA, Senior Principal Scientist. Yeah. Over to you, Dr. or Professor S.K. Singh. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, you know that uh, already Dr. Rakesh Kumar and Dr. Saurabhdi Gupta has been touched upon that why that required low energy base uh, cement clinker. I hope my uh, slides are visible. Yes, yes, very Thank much. You. And these are in full screen mode. Yes. So, and uh, because you know that capacity of time only, I will just touch upon few areas we are working and what is it's required. Uh, as already been told uh, that uh, uh, that uh, infrastructure constructions is going on in a very high scale. If you look into the worldwide data, there was only 1.39 billion tons if you look into the year 1995, and uh, that has reached to 4.4 billion tons in year 2021. And so high level of cement requirements has been, uh, if you look into the Indian context, presently we are producing about uh, 300 million tons uh, in uh, 2021 with the capacity of 480 million tons and uh, we have been looking that within two to three uh, years that cement production is go going to have more than 5 million, uh, 500 million tons, so 300 to 500 and uh, it's the same thing with the worldwide. As uh, being told uh, by Saurabhdeep that uh, it's been usual says one ton of cement produces about one ton of carbon dioxide, definitely. And it's required a huge quantity of raw materials if you look into the clay, limestones and other. And it uh, consumes about uh, 3 to 5.8 gigajoule depending upon the uh, type of processing and uh, 80 to 88 to 141 kilowatt of thermal and electrical energy respectively. So a lot of you know that modification in the processing has carried out in by the cement industries, particularly in India. Uh, but still, it is by about 0.9 tons CO2 produces uh, through uh, one ton of cement productions and uh, 0.74 kg of socks and 1.15 kg of knocks and uh, not less than 20 kg of bitters. So 
it's been a major challenge, major issue with the cement industries, particularly. And uh, if you look into that, and this CO2 in cement, particularly, comes from the clinker productions, it's uh, so 95%. And this is a big challenge where uh, environmental imbalance, and everybody is looking how we can reduce. Uh, uh, only uh, the process is there, uh, you know. Uh, uh, how we can go ahead with that? Uh, we have a binder, sustainable you, binder, which should be have uh, composed with the renewable uh, resources. What uh, uh, Dr. Rakesh Kumar has said uh, very rightly that we should look into the waste utilizations in composing the cement binder. Also, you know that uh, we should use the environmental responsible with the minimum possible environmental cost means sustainable, low energy utilization is uh, one issue where we can look and uh, that and it should be easily recyclable and efficient durable and as uh, we have said it uh, that uh, I started you know that uh, it's been mostly used material binders uh, and also said it that cement is after water in this earth is being used and uh, so continuously technological uh, you know right technology and right uh, processing has been uh, taken place and substitute this cement clinker uh, to other materials and uh, definitely uh, you know that the cement industries and other people are making a pozzolonic cement composite cement slag cement and a lot of is being uh, going ahead but uh, in in this area, CBRI has done a very good work, particularly at cement free cement TCS binder, uh, that is, uh, sorry, cement free binders, which is the geopolymeric. But still, uh, there is uh, some challenges into that where we are looking at uh, two components where liquid form of uh, activators and uh, solid form of uh, precursor. So uh, we have continuously proceeded towards uh, a uh, single component or you can say a green binder which has been and we have carried out a very extensive laboratory and presented there are uh, several type of uh, you know uh, binders which is being treated as a green uh, that is a calcium aluminate cement calcium sulfo aluminate cement composite cement this is being uh, particularly if you look into the Bihar, West Bengal and Northeast area, people are uh, being using and coming more. And also, uh, you know, in uh, Maharashtra, particular area of uh, uh, this Karnataka and other part of country, uh, that is a composite cement, uh, which has been using uh, Portland clinker, ground graduated blast furnace slags and fly ash. And several other, you know, uh, type of uh, cements has been developed uh, where CBRI is continuously working on particularly in alkali acti activated binders we have uh, met uh, with the cement free roads and other building products and uh, also we are working on uh, you know that uh, low uh, uh, limestone based cementitious binder and slag activated as uh, we are aware that two type of uh, slags are there. One is the iron slags uh, that is known as uh, ground grated blast furnace slags, which is being about more than 95% is being used in the cement industries, being a high level of glassy phases available into that. But where comes to the steel slag, like electric off furnace slag or ladder furnace slags or other type of steel where, you know, second process steel slag, it is mostly 80 percent has been dumped and we started with the project uh, ministry of steel and utilizing into the cement concrete road and also uh, particularly uh, we are making a uh, cement activating it and uh, making into the cement and uh, several other you know uh, lime sludge and uh, uh, ggbs using calcine clay we have uh, developed a cement tcs binder into the laboratory uh, you know that uh, all those cements has some drawbacks has been looked into but uh, continuously improvement we are doing into the laboratory and maybe very soon so we will going to have a bigger trial into the field we are already been in touch with the ultra tech cement and other cement industries for that uh, if you look into the overall how we should look into that is uh, uh, two methods uh, there is one by we look into uh, alternative binders or uh, another is uh, alternative fuels and uh, 
uh, I'm happy to say that uh, majority of cement industries uh, are doing, are processing uh, towards alternative fuels. And uh, uh, the, the, as per the government uh, requirement, they have to go a reduction in energy requirement by 20% by 2025. So uh, they are looking an alternative. And also uh, they have worked on different type of novel cement or supplement, adding a supplementary cementitious material. Uh, one where uh, CBRI has done uh, particularly a very uh, good work in alkali activated cement or geopolymer binder. Also, we are working in other field uh, uh, where you know that uh, uh, calcium hydrosilicate based cement and uh, but other uh, low energy based cements are limestone calcined clay cement, reactive bellite rich portland cement, and BCSF magnesium oxide based cement it is really has been a very good one where we can say uh, uh, carbon here you know that uh, cbri has made effort slag activated cement binder up to 30 percent slag by mechanical chemical treatment we have carried out and redu reduced the clinker uh, cement ratio by 35 percent and also we worked on the lime sludge based where this ratio has further reduced by 50 percent also high volume fly ash binder low calcium binder green and geopolymer what we are working uh, you know it is uh, in a binder form in a bag form where a different type of uh, based material with the solid alkali activator we have uh, where somewhere time sometimes we require and we have developed into the laboratory we have done uh, all curing techniques life cycle analysis and uh, it is under publications uh, you know that uh, because uh, i would like to summarize this uh, this is the sustainable binder which has been low energy based and low clinker based uh, binder is our of the need utilizing green materials the definitely the codes and guidelines are need to be modified so that uh, uh, agencies can briefly use and uh, i would like to uh, conclude my presentation uh, with the uh, Oliver Holmes, uh, this uh, quote, a hundred years after we are gone and forgotten, those who never heard of us will be living with the result of our action. So as uh, institutions, as uh, organizations, we are working on different uh, uh, type of uh, low energy and low clinker based binder at CSIR, CBRI. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sukumar, sir. Thank you, Professor S.K. Singh, for uh, your wonderful presentation and uh, uh, highlighting the work uh, being done at CSIR, CBRI, uh, wherein you have uh, you know, shown uh, several alternatives uh, of cementitious binders. And, uh, and uh, uh, before that, you know, Dr. Gupta also mentioned about uh, you know, stubble uh, burning issue, wherein uh, you know, uh, the CSIR and Pri Bhopal has come out with a technology developed by uh, Dr. Ashokan Papu and uh, Dr. Srivastava for uh, uh, utilization of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, stubble waste in the formulation of, uh, uh, you know, boards. Uh, but uh, uh, your insight on, you know, uh, on uh, low carbon materials, I think this is going to be a game changer in the coming years. Uh, before I invite uh, uh, Lalpi Singh, I'll ha I have, you know, a couple of questions, uh, Professor S.K. Singh, for yeah. you, you know, you mentioned about uh, you know these uh, uh, alternative cementitious uh, binders. So, so how a single component binder can help in uh, reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and uh, how uh, you know uh, you mentioned about slag uh, activated binder. How this is uh, helpful in reduction of uh, CO2 emissions. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, very rightly, uh, you know, raise the questions. Uh, we are working at CBRI for several years on a two component binder system. And we found that when we have led roads and real applications and making different uh, uh, you know building products and we found that this corrosive nature of activators handling is a big issue and uh, have a high things so then at that time we thought it why not it should be like just add a water like a cement because people are used to that and in this we are using everything in the, into in the dry farm if you look into the waste material or if you look into the uh, activators and uh, 
we are calcining it and made it into the laboratory and maybe in the due course of time or within few months we have a bag farm launch into the market so that people can take it and if they want to make a road repair or they want to make a building constructions at anywhere and it's concerned with the steel slag. Uh, you know that uh, uh, steel slag is uh, in a crystalline uh, nature, as uh, whereas our uh, iron slag is been uh, very much in glossy phase, uh, more than uh, 92 to 95 percent glossy phase of level into that. So our aim is that how this steel slag should be activated, and we have done a chemical activations, appropriate chemical activations with the steel slag that so that it's react reactivity should be increased and we have enhanced its reactivity and utilized as a replacement of a cement clinker. So by this way we achieve it and we have published several uh, three papers on that into construction thank and you. building thank materials. You, thank, you, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks. Yeah, we'll take up uh, more questions at the end of the session. And uh, now I move to the second speaker, Dr. L.P. Singh, who is uh, a senior principal scientist at CSIR CBRI Rutki is a, one of the star scientists of CBRI who has been working in the area of uh, building materials uh, and uh, recently has uh, come out with uh, a few technologies. But uh, who is on FRSC and uh, has uh, published several uh, publications in the peer reviewed journals. Uh, developed several technologies, uh, got uh, several awards uh, and honors, uh, and uh, uh, many, many more uh, uh, laurels uh, is uh, 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 portfolio. So, uh, because time is very short, so I'm not uh, elaborating on the biodata, you can go through his uh, uh, profile in his uh, CV uh, at CSR CBRA website. And uh, with this short introduction, over to you, Dr. L.P. Singh. Thank you, sir, Dr. Ashok. Uh, so without uh, wasting even a single second, uh, is my my slides are visible? Yes, yes, okay. yes you, can, okay. you can be a little louder. Okay. Uh, uh, as for today's topic, uh, I will be discussing about uh, two or three products that we have uh, recently worked at CBRI in recent past. And uh, as the topic goes, uh, low carbon materials we are talking about today. Uh, by and large, uh, all the construction sector is depending on either on bricks or on concrete, cement or concrete. So decarbonizing bricks or decarbonizing cement or concrete is the probably the challenging task as far as uh, decarbonizing uh, India is concerned. So I will be talking on these topics today and I will show uh, two or three technologies where uh, we have reached to a TRL level uh, seven to eight or above. Uh, uh, first, I will start uh, with the clay brick. Uh, and as you know, uh, probably uh, India is the second largest producer of burnt clay bricks. I'm, I'm talking about the red bricks. And in India, approximately we have around uh, 100,000 brick kilns producing around 250 billion bricks employing uh, around 10 million workers. And this consume huge amount of coal. So this is not only a very energy intensive uh, uh, manufacturing process, but it also has very, very severe environmental concerns uh, because it is producing huge amount of particulate matter. It is emitting huge amount of carbon into the environment. So, uh, Looking into the problems of uh, by brick industries, uh, National Green Tribunal uh, has already banned almost 3,000 brick kilns in the Delhi NCR region. And by quoting that, uh, breathing is more important than manufacturing the brick. Also, at international level, WHO says that air pollution kills around 7 million people per year. So, and they have further toughened the guidelines for air pollution norms. So in India for brick kilns, uh, it is around uh, 250 microgram per meter cube, whereas international standard is around 100. So uh, NG, NGT has mentioned that uh, uh, all the brick kilns should work on PNG, 
PNG or some other alternative technology, uh, which has a lesser pollution emission standards as per uh, uh, international emission standards. So, uh, and as you all know that uh, in India, brick uh, manufacturing is a urban or semi-urban uh, practice. Uh, it's a MSME sector and people are using old age technologies. So at recently CBRI, we have come up a new technology. I can't hear you. Huh? Pardon, sir? We can't hear you. Okay, is it, is it okay now, sir? No, yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. Okay. Yes. So uh, at recently at CBRI, uh, we have come up a, a intervention into the existing technology. So what we are doing that uh, we are coming up, we have recently demonstrated this technology. This is an internal fuel based technology where, where number of uh, uh, industrial waste or can be used for brick manufacturing. This can be like rejected coal, rice husk, fly ash, bagasse ash, sawdust, and other kind of waste. So what we need actually here is a low calorie based industrial waste that can be used for brick manufacturing. And what we do uh, that we mix this uh, waste with the uh, uh, soil mass and then we uh, bake or burn the bricks in the conventional brick kilns without adding any external coal. So what happens because of this, the pollution level is substantially reduced here is this process is quite energy efficient because we are not using the coal and we are using in fact the reject coal or agro industrial waste and we have found that the suspended particulate matter level can be brought down to less than 100 microgram per meter cube so it also gives a cleaner environment at workplace and the process is mechanized so uh, there are higher production as far as con uh, conventional brick production is concerned uh, overall, uh, the proper bricks are produced. Uh, the, even the chimney height that it requires a lot of capital cost can be reduced. So overall, the process is a win-win situation as far as the performance of the bricks is concerned, as far as the environment is concerned, as far as the uh, saving in coal is concerned. So we have already developed this technology and transferred this technology to, uh, to two brick kiln owners. And uh, we are now propagating this technology to be disseminated further. Another aspect when we are talking about concrete sustainability is cement or concrete. So one of the very important issue about cement or concrete is its life. Why is, I, I always feel that cement is a synthetic material and every synthetic material has a life. So why a material cement or concrete should have a life of, let us say, uh, 70, 80 or 100 years? Because the, it's a synthetic material. The material produced after the hydration of cement, calcium, silicate, hydrate, etc., they all are synthetic and they have a life. What happens over a period of time, calcium starts coming out from uh, your calcium silicate hydrates, and probably that is one of the reasons. So, what at CBRI we are working, we are not only trying to produce some uh, immediate benefits from uh, uh, in concrete, cement concrete, like early stage, we are also talking about the performance we are. But apart from early stage strength performance, we are talking the durability also. And durability means life cycle, means why a concrete should not have a life of 200 or more than 200 years, so that for special structures like bridges, high rise buildings have a longer lifespan. So uh, with the uh, intervention of nanomaterials, we, have, uh, we are working on this aspect for the last one decade or so, and we have shown that the life of a concrete can be NS around 2.5 to three times. So apart from uh, apart from improved performance, apart from early stage strength development, we can also get the higher. Uh, we can also get the uh, longer life longer life of a concrete. So with the and uh, there was a question I think when we started working on this aspect that what are the cost will be of nanomaterials. So the cost of nanomaterial has been now very is now very competitive and can be used for the construction sector. This technology also we have tra transferred to the market, and three basic advantage we get when we add these nanomaterials to the concrete: high early stage strength. That means it will reduce the construction period. It will give higher performance and durability because it reduces calcium leaching, sulfate attack, carbonation, and less uh, chloride ingress in. So therefore, we have the enhanced service life that leads to reduced life cycle cost. And thus, uh, the real challenge with concrete that we call about concrete sustainability 
can be addressed by the use of nanotechnology. Uh, third, as the topic goes for, for today's uh, uh, seminar, that carbon capture. CBRI has started recently working on uh, CO2 utilization in uh, construction materials. So as we know, uh, by and large, so far, CO2 is used either for uh, algae, fuel, uh, chemical intermediates like forming some acids or uh, polymers. But probably one of the largest area, if the technologies are in place uh, will be the uh, construction sector where this CO2 can be uh, in a, utilized in a big way. So if we look into the uh, international scenario, uh, uh, for all these areas, probably in building materials, many, many technologies have reached to a TRL level seven, eight, or nine, where uh, means products are already have already started coming into the market. So there are many, many companies like Carbon8, Carbon Cure, Solid Cement, Carbostream. So many, many products are coming into the market uh, where uh, CO2 is being sequestered into cement concrete in one way or other. CBRI also we are working on uh, making some kind of uh, artificial aggregate. So there are two ways to making RT, uh, aggregates. One is a sintered fly ash aggregate. Second is a expanded clay lightweight aggregate. So these are the two established technologies. So what we CBRI are trying to do, uh, there is a recent technology that is a solidia cement. Normally cement is manufactured at a temperature of around 1500 or 1550 degrees centigrade, but solidia cement produces carbonatable phases at 1200 degrees centigrade. So we are fusing both the technologies and we are sequestering more than 20% CO2 into these artificial aggregates. Apart from that, uh, another we are also working uh, on low carbon cements where uh, uh, cement we are trying to produce, uh, you know, as cement is a highly energy intensive process. Professor Gupta already mentioned probably one ton of cement produces around 0.8 to 0.9 ton of carbon dioxide and it is very energy intensive process. So can we produce a cement at a lower degree where even rejected limestone can be used? So there are challenges in cement industries so, and we are working on that. So two technologies I showed and sequestered, carbon sequestered uh, aggregate technology that is in place, CBRI is working. And this is one another area where CBRI is, is have initiated some research in the area of low carbon cement. So these are some of the area I wanted to discuss today. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you Ashokji for giving me an opportunity to make my presentation. Thank you, Dr. L.P. Singh, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, highlighted the importance of, uh, uh, you know, concrete sustainability and uh, also the nano-engineered concrete that can enhance the uh, life cycle of uh, the buildings. Uh, and uh, also the very important technology called uh, internal fuel-based technology, wherein, uh, you know, about 20-25% uh, reduction in uh, uh, burn clay bricks can happen. So, so uh, and uh, uh, going back to you know uh, one kg of cement that produces about one kg of CO2 that Saurabh Gupta mentioned, and then followed by uh, Professor Eskissing, he mentioned about uh, 0.9. Now you are about 0.8, but uh, uh, the figures uh, that are published, uh, I had the opportunity to interact with many people across the industry. So they are talking about uh, you know 0.7. Uh, Kg, you know, CO2. So you can see the the variation or the 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 kind of uh, uh, inter interventions that have uh, taken place uh, in uh, in the in the uh, technology in the formulation of cement. So uh, so I am sure uh, will he will hear more uh, such uh, talks in the future. So before I invite uh, Dr. S. R. Karade, I have a couple of questions. Uh, to you, Dr. L.P. Singh, that you know you mentioned about uh, buildings, uh, building sector uh, um, in the coming years. That yes, uh, modernization is going to happen, and uh, as I also mentioned in my opening slide, that 50% uh, of uh, the build speed is going to be built uh, yet to be built uh, by 2050. Uh, and uh, uh, building, uh, uh, you know, when we are talking about bricks in uh, in the building sector, so why, what do you see uh, your uh, uh, your stake on this, you know, how this modernization uh, is linked to this uh, brick sector uh, consumption and reduction in the in the uh, CO2. And uh, what are the emerging technologies of uh, uh, CO2 that can be utilized 
in the construction sector, particularly the one that I is trying to develop. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, you have put two questions, one about the modernization in brick. Uh, yes, uh, brick manufacturing is a very traditional technology. I think you have to come closer to your mic. You are not audible. Can't hear. No. I think you are muted. Uh, Dr. L.P. Singh, we cannot, cannot hear you. Okay, we'll we'll take up this question later on when uh, we come back again. <laughs> no, we can't hear you, uh, Dr. L.P. Singh, sorry. So we move on to the next speaker, uh, Dr. S.R. Karade, who has already joined. Uh, uh, Dr. Karade needs no introduction, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Dr. Grade is the chief scientist and head of uh, Advanced Structural Composites and Durability Group of CSR CBRI Rudki, and uh, he holds a PhD and uh, uh, one of the very uh, important disciplines that he uh, he always works on the corrosion. And uh, recently, his uh, his team has come out with a new technology uh, called Hemp Concrete, and uh, uh, Dr. Grade has published several uh, papers in the peer-reviewed journals. Uh, uh, developed many technologies, uh, received many honors and awards. Uh, so, with this brief introduction, uh, 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 Dr. Grade, over to you uh, on hemp concrete, which is one of the very fascinating material of the future. Thank you. Thank you, Asokji, for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, my voice is okay? Yes. Uh, thanks. So, uh, I'm going to talk about an uh, uh, interesting material. That's a uh, hem concrete, and uh, I think my previous speakers have made my job easy by presenting uh, various background of uh, this technology, uh, which is related uh, to other green materials also. So in this presentation, I will uh, just uh, first introduce about uh, hem concrete and what are the issues, then uh, about hem plant because many persons may not know it, then what research has been done at uh, CBRI and uh, the properties of hemp concrete. So as you know, my previous speakers have also emphasized this uh, need of uh, energy efficient buildings and uh, energy efficient materials also, because uh, it's a 40 to 45% of uh, global carbon emission comes from buildings. Out of that, about 36% goes for uh, building operation in maintaining the comfort level in the buildings and about 9% comes from the building materials and construction process. Out of this, uh, you know, uh, one of the walling material, uh, like uh, Dr. L.P. Singh mentioned, is a uh, 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 burnt clay bricks. And uh, it causes a lot of uh, carbon emissions. Uh, it's around 0.4 to 8 kg uh, carbon dioxide uh, per kg of uh, bricks. So in India, about 107 million tons of carbon emission is coming from brick industry. So therefore, there is a need to find some alternative. Just to... uh, your slides are gone. You have to reshare. Uh, yeah. So uh, there, there is a need uh, for uh, alternative building materials. Dr. Grade. Uh, uh, can you share it again? Uh, your slides okay, are not. Okay, okay, something gone wrong. Okay, I'll do this. No problem, no problem. Take your time. Keep it on a full screen mode. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. now? Yes. Right. So, uh, for all, uh, when we are talking about alternative walling material to replace the burnt clay bricks, uh, we have various vegetable uh, or uh, bio uh, kind of waste available in India because uh, India is a, a, a agriculture dominated economy. So can we use this uh, uh, material in making uh, composite and walling materials? 
So the, uh, yes, we can do the previous research. I have done various, I uh, uh, have developed various products. So uh, either we can use a mineral binder or non-mineral binder. In non-mineral binder, mostly resin is used, but uh, we are not uh, opting uh, for uh, resin-based binder because uh, the products have lower resistance towards water or uh, termite or fire. And then, you know, energy contents, uh, its embodied energy is very, very high. So that's why uh, we are going towards the uh, mineral binders. Now the uh, material we are considering is hemp. Hemp in Hindi will be called ganja also. And uh, many uh, uh, many persons or people have, might have seen this plant uh, growing widely uh, throughout India. And uh, you know, all, uh, all parts of this plant are utilized except the stem. Uh, because this uh, fibers have very, uh, uh, is very good quality. It's uh, almost comparable to silk. Then uh, uh, these uh, from seeds, you can make oil, or uh, there are many other applications. In literature, more than 50,000 applications of hemp products are made. Even its uh, roots are also used in uh, uh, medicine and other things. So uh, we are targeting to, because presently these uh, stacks are, or uh, stem is used for burning purpose. So to uh, avoid that burning, we are making it a powder and trying to replace the fine aggregate. And as you know, in making cement mortar or concrete fine aggregate is also a, a scarce material and uh, it's a uh, uh, we are uh, feeling this uh, limit uh, limited availability in many uh, uh, cities so uh, we can use uh, because of it's a lightweight we can use it for thermal insulation material also so this uh, wild hemp is grown in uh, uh, because there is no organized data for that it's estimated that about 1 lakh to 2 lakh Hectares is uh, wild hemp is grown throughout the country. In Uttarakhand state, uh, there is a legislation for licensed cultivation of it. And many other states uh, like Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Maharashtra also, there is uh, some uh, uh, legislation, but not clear uh, uh, guidelines. There is a gray area about this. So wild hemp can be used for making this material. So uh, in this view, we have uh, undertaken one study. Can we use uh, this hemp uh, stems for making lightweight building materials? So uh, this research was sponsored by Green Gems uh, Infrastructure, Visakhapatnam. Uh, the current status is we have developed a mixed design using various binders, hemp using uh, various binders and hemp particles to replace the fine aggregates and uh, uh, for replacement of burnt clay bricks involving applications. So uh, initially, you know, binder is a, a, a very important property. Uh, it dictates the properties like strength, durability, thermal conductivity, hydro uh, thermal behavior and so on. So we started with uh, natural hydraulic lime, uh, then calcic lime, magnesium oxide, magnesium phosphate, uh, then uh, vegetable protein binders, lime pozzolona. But the best properties uh, we have found with fly ash and slag based uh, geopolymer, where uh, we are getting the maximum strength. So uh, we are our focus is more on on this binder. Although we have made the uh, composites with these binders also. So with the uh, 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 geopolymer, we could achieve uh, uh, density of 1250 to 1300 kg per cubic meter, 11 to 12 MPa strength. Water absorption is below 20%. Shrinkage is also very less. There is a slight efflorescence. In comparison to uh, burnt bricks, you can see here we are getting better properties. Now you can see in the 14 days itself, we can get uh, most of the strength here. Uh, in 28 days, we can get around 12 MPa. Then flexural strength uh, uh, in 28 days, get, uh, days we get more flexural strength, uh, water absorption is around 18 to 20 percent, while dry density, uh, it reduces with time because of drying of the hemp particles. So, uh, you know, with uh, cement or lime-based uh, uh, 
uh, hem concrete uh, you cannot use them in the load bearing applications but in the filling of the wall or inside walls this kind of application we can found and these because of Dr. Karade, we lost, uh, we lost the voice. Uh, Dr. Karade, can you hear me? Hello. Host, can you hear me? Ms. Palat Dixit? Yeah, Dr. Grade, you are muted. Sorry, actually, uh, there was an uh, internet problem. <laughs> no, no problem, no problem. Please carry on. Uh, Quickly, you finish it. Or have you finished? Uh, just finishing. Can you see my slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last slide you can. Okay, do. okay. So uh, this uh, I was talking about thermal conductivity is uh, very low. It's a 0 0.6 to 0 0.18 uh, uh, watt per meter Kelvin. While the the thermal conductivity is similar to cellular concrete blocks. Is the energy efficiency of M concrete buildings are found to be higher because of hydrothermal behavior of this material and uh, which we can see here as the thermal conductivity increases, uh, sorry, uh, relative humidity increases. Uh, you can see the thermal capacity of uh, this material also increases. That means it absorbs some moisture and provides more thermal comfort inside the room. So these are the uh, some silent, uh, very important feature of hem concrete. And uh, when we talk about the carbon emission and those things, uh, in this picture, you can see how uh, this carbon emission is calculated. Uh, during its growth itself, it absorbs a lot of carbon dioxide uh, in photosynthesis. However, uh, in uh, transportation and manufacturing, there is some carbon is emitted. And while in use, if we use lime-based or geopolymer based, it absorbs again carbon dioxide. So the net carbon emissions, uh, emission is in minus. There's a minus 48.36 kg per cubic meter of uh, uh, hem concrete. That's the main feature of this concrete. So I would like to thank uh, my PhD scholar uh, Tarun Jami and uh, Green Gym uh, in infrastructure for sponsoring this research. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karade, for a wonderful presentation uh, on a very important uh, product, uh, uh, you know, hand concrete. Uh, I'm sure uh, the people who have joined, uh, they will have questions at the end of this, but uh, I have a you know, quick uh, couple of questions uh, to you, although you have mentioned uh, already that uh, uh, this uh, hand concrete technology can lead to uh, decarbonization, if yes, uh, what is the percentage uh, reduction? You talked about uh, 48.36, uh, uh, you know, kg CO2 equivalent, you know, you mentioned that. Yes. Uh, is that figure correct, uh, you know? Uh, so how, you know, how this uh, can lead to uh, decarbonization if we use in a building? So, uh, okay, okay, it's an important question. Actually, this is just an indicative uh, figure. It yeah. depends upon the type of binder we can use. So okay. if we go for lime-based uh, binder and this thing, this is uh, in more negative. But if you go for cement-based binder, that is almost equivalent to the aerated or cellular concrete block. 
but in long run because it absorbs uh, uh, the carbon dioxide and those things it's more beneficial then it provides better thermal insulation and uh, more comfort so you know your operative energy and that is substantially reduced so that's the figure throughout the world that's why uh, uh, there are a lot of attention that this material is getting from uh, many architects and those things. Thank you, Dr. Grady. I had the opportunity to visit uh, Germany a couple of times and there also people are trying to use this hemp concrete. You know, we had uh, this Indo-German seminar also where Simon uh, yes. Smith also mentioned about the use of hemp concrete in buildings in Germany. And uh, I'm sure the, 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 the thermal connectivity values that you have shared uh, ranging from 0.06 to 0.18 watt per meter Kelvin, you know, they are going to play a major role in uh, reducing the overall, you know, uh, thermal loads in buildings, you know. So, so, so there is, we always compare uh, these materials when we are talking about uh, the high growth thermal behavior and, that, and also the, the reduction in the, in the, in the uh, overall thermal loads and energy, uh, energy uh, loads, you know. Or improving energy efficiency. So I'm sure this is this uh, is going to be very fascinating material for architects uh, in the future, and uh, this will also uh, lead to some percentage reduction uh, or some uh, uh, you know uh, uh, possible advantages of uh, decarbonizing uh, India. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kradi, for you. highlighting. Th thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we, we are moving to the uh, next speaker, uh, Dr. Neera Jain, uh, who is the principal scientist and who is going to speak on uh, binders from waste gypsum. And uh, 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 to some of you, uh, those who have not uh, listened to him, uh, he works in the area of uh, waste to wealth, uh, particularly developing, uh, you know, uh, cement free plasters, wherein he has uh, uh, developed several technologies uh, from uh, uh, you know, particularly uh, uh, from uh, uh, these uh, industries, uh, uh, alpha plaster or or gypsum uh, based plaster or binders from waste gypsum. So, so uh, several uh, materials uh, have, have been developed by he, his uh, team, uh, and uh, he has uh, also received uh, recently NTPC award uh, uh, for uh, his research and. Uh, a uh, lot of good work has been done by uh, him and his team uh, uh, in the area of uh, uh, waste gypsum uh, and uh, materials uh, development in the area of alpha, alpha plaster and things like that. And uh, these uh, are going to be, again, a game changer for the building industry in the coming years. Over to you, Dr. Neeraj, uh, for uh, your presentation, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, myself, Dr. Neeraj Jain. Very good morning to all of you. So here I'm going to discuss about the binders that these are developed from this gypsum. So, so as we know that our the, uh, there are about uh, 6 million tons of waste materials like uh, byproduct gypsum, plagues, red mud and mine tailings and so on. There are so many materials are annually produced from the industrial pro processes in India and the byproduct gypsum is one of them. Majority of the gypsum which are uh, uh, generated from uh, phosphoric acid in the industry, hydrochloric industry, titanium uh, intermediate dye industry and so on. So these waste gypsum are probably known as phosphor gypsum, fluoro gypsum, titanium gypsum, ash acid gypsum, citro gypsum and FGT gypsum. We, uh, about uh, 6 million tons of byproduct gypsum are discharged annually in the country and about 40% of these waste gypsum are utilized by the cement industries in soil reclamation and as a building materials. And uh, uh, as we know that uh, during this desulfurization pro process, uh, a byproduct gypsum uh, called FGT gypsum is also going to generate in the country. And uh, it is estimated that by 2025, uh, about 25 million tons of this waste gypsum will be generated from the thermal power plants. So, uh, in our studies, we have utilized many types of these gypsum for the development of various uh, binders and plasters, which are having the low, uh, which are developed using the uh, low embodied carbon materials. He lost your slides, uh, no, Dr. No. Nero. Yes, it is. It is coming, sir. Uh, actually, it is not going to the next slide. 
I think uh, you unshare it and then reshare. Yes, sir. So the first uh, uh, binder or plaster is yes. called the alpha plaster. It, it has been uh, We can't hear you, Niranj. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please carry on, carry on. So, the first slide was related to the alpha plaster. Alpha plaster is developed from the uh, phosphor gypsum, which is a waste from the phosphoric acid industry. And uh, we have developed uh, this uh, alpha plaster using the hydrothermal. Please carry on, carry on. <laughs> Dr. Nezer, we can't, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Please unshare your screen and reshare, rejoin. Dr. Mathi, we cannot hear you. Yeah, then you go over. Uh, just a moment, please. Uh, there is a network issue, so. Uh, I have requested him to uh, rejoin. Just hold on for a while. Although this is a new normal in, uh, in the uh, present day context, uh, wherein we, uh, you know, join through online programs. Uh, and uh, this is uh, because of the uh, pandemic uh, uh, that uh, this technology, uh, you know, disruptive technology has been uh, developed uh, by uh, scientists and uh, this is how we are, uh, you know, uh, we are able to join uh, through online programs, uh, wasting uh, very less uh, uh, resources uh, um, and uh, particularly uh, the, the travel time and all that, you know, uh, so, so please be here with me just hold just uh, for a moment uh, you'll join shortly uh so I think uh, because without wasting uh, time, uh, uh, I would now request uh, Dr. Lakhani. Dr. Lakhani, madam, are you available? 
Total yes, sir, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we move to the next speaker, uh, Dr. Rajni Likhani, who is the chief scientist at uh, CSIR uh, CBRA Ruki, and uh, he was also the head of the Department of Organic Building Materials uh, for, for quite some time. And uh, uh, Dr. Likhani needs no introduction, but uh, those who are uh, from uh, other institutions, I would like to. Uh, mentioned that uh, Dr. Lakhani has worked on several value-added building materials, particularly from stone waste and uh, uh, technologies have been developed and uh, these are transferred to many industries, particularly the stone waste, quota stone waste and uh, and like that. So, uh, and she has received several awards and many technologies uh, have been uh, 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 transferred to, to, to many industries. Uh, uh, there are several honors and awards to her. Uh, several publications in the in the peer reviewed journals and uh, and uh, uh, much more uh, than this uh, uh, without wasting much time over to you dr rajni lakhani please yes, sir. you can put it on the full screen mode yeah. is it okay yes sir thank you for nice introduction mm, good morning everybody um, myself rajni lakhani with the Presenting before you the value added building materials from stone waste. In my 32 years of service, we have worked on various technologies and we have transferred the technologies. And since I am in organic building material group, and our group is working on the value added products from different waste and the recycling of plastic waste for building application through value addition, protective and decorative coating. Out of this work, we have developed certain technologies and reached to technology readiness level eight to nine, which is actually a mandate of this CBRI that we have to see the PRL level of all the technologies, which has to be transferred to the industry. Since you all know that certain type of waste, which are available in abundant, we have used some waste here, like marble quota stone waste, uh, rice husk, pine needle, and this fly ash. This has been used in our R&D and we have developed certain technologies. Before coming to my main slides, I would like to show you some of the technologies which has already been given to the entrepreneurs and this is working well in the field. Like one is, this is the proven technology we have developed on anti-corrosive coating. This is basically interpenetrating network coating which has been transferred to Kansai Nerolet and Burger Paints also. And this is the, uh, I, I'll not go in the detail of these technologies. If anybody wants, they can contact CBRI afterward. This is EPS door shutter, that is expanded polystyrene door shutter. These are basically lightweight wood substitute material. This has a whole R&D from A to Z has been done and it, it has been tested as per IS4020. And this technology has already been commercialized. Now, this is regarding this waste, that is pine needle, BS boards and roofing tiles has been developed and all the properties as per the Indian standard has been seen. And this is also in the technology readiness level eight. This is Quire Keshunat Shell Liquid Boards, Quire CNSL Board. This has also been developed. And this has been seen that uh, all the physical mechanical properties are as per the standard. This is from waste sanitary wear. Because many industries, they approached us, like periwear industries, they had approached us and they wanted their waste to use uh, for value addition. For this, we have developed the acid resistance styles and the technology was commercialized to periwear industry only. This is from com this is a composite boards and panel from agro industrial waste, then boards uh, tiles from this vermiculite. Vermiculite basically is a micaceous waste which has been used for developing thermal insulated lightweight material that is tiles has been developed and this technology has also been commercialized to two parties. One is in Jaipur and other is in Ajmer. Now coming to my uh, this uh, main presentation that is from stone waste. Actually, this project we had taken from when Rajasthan State Pollution Control Board they approached us because they were facing a lot of problem of this disposal of uh, quota stone waste, which has been dumped on roadside like solid waste as well as this slurry coming from the uh, uh, this polishing and the mining industry waste. All this was lying as such in uh, Rajasthan area. So what we have done 
after the Rajasthan State Pollution Control Board, they approached us because this was causing a lot of problem. That is groundwater contamination, air pollution, choking of drain. All these problems were there. So we had taken this waste material and we had replaced this stone waste in the our this keynote speaker uh, keynote speaker Dr. Saurabh Gupta also and Dr. Saurabhip Gupta also touched upon this thing that um, this uh, fine aggregate filler he has used this biochar here in this research we have used this fine aggregate as well as coarse aggregate this stone waste has been used which has been evaluated for particle size distribution and packing density to develop more compact high strength and durable heterogeneous concrete mass all these properties has been done by taking 10 to 15 percent of cement because we have reduced the amount of cement here that is why we have touched upon the carbon dioxide content also and whole this work has been done after this evaluation of this thing as per workability compressive strength strength performance factor fresh and hardened density drying shrinkage microstructure characterization thermal properties all this has been done and we have come up with these building material that is tiles has been developed out of it paver block m60 m80 this these are the wall tiles then lightweight blocks has also been developed and in this 60 to 70 percent of this waste has been utilized this technology has also been commercialized to many visitors you know, honorable minister has also visited cbri during their visit we have demonstrated them paver block which were complying as per is 15658 then tiles, lightweight blocks as per IS2185, all these properties has been seen. And this technology, after reaching technology readiness level 8 to 9, this was commercialized to Rajasthan State Pollution Control Board when their team had visited CBRI. Because before giving this technology, we had arranged certain industry meet also in Ramganj, Mandi, in CBRI, in Jarawat, etc. And we have demonstrated this technology to industry who had visited CBRI and during this Rajasthan Startup Fest also, which was in Jaipur, uh, Honorable Minister Shrimati Vasundra Raje had also visited our stall. And this is uh, Shrimati Aparna Kapoor, who is uh, this um, uh, chairperson of Rajasthan State Pollution Control Board at that time. So um, in nutshell, I want to tell you that this technology was commercialized successively to Rajasthan State Pollution Control Board. As a result, um, the small scale industrial association, they had set up a unit that is Pashan Welfare Foundation in which they had started up its startup plant in Kota where 30, nearly 30 industries they had participated. And this startup plant is running as at present also in Kota where the production capacity is 8,000 uh, for flooring tiles, 3,500 for paver block and 5,000 blocks uh, per day. By doing all this, they are getting rid of this 100 ton quota stone waste per day. So this is really a good technology where the disposal of this waste has been taken care of. This In this lightweight concrete, we had taken all these points that is thermal insulation, non-load bearing structure and load bearing structure as per the density given in IS2185. And this uh, only slurry has been used in the lightweight concrete because to get rid of this brick because brick uh, during the manufacturing of brick as dr lp singh also pointed out that it, this is burning of fuel result in emission of gaseous pollutant and ash into environment causing air pollution so we had taken all these points in consideration and this evaluation was done in terms of all these properties so by doing all this work we had done the value addition of stone waste in terms of cost strength and thermal comfort as a result, many more industry can be set up and uh, this is uh, uh, saving of natural resources also. And we have used the, this reduces carbon dioxide emission by cement replacement, Swachh Bharat Abhyan by waste utilization, and it is saving environment by reducing air, water, and land pollution. So based on the research efforts we have done, there could be ways and means to dispose of the waste and relieve pressure on land and environment. And manufacturing of building material from waste and byproduct would reduce pollution and energy consumption uh, level compared to traditional process using basic raw material. And um, all these persons have helped me in my r and I am really thankful to my team, my acknowledges for RSPCB as well as the Pashan Welfare Foundation and CSIR CBRI Rupi. 
this is all i want to share regarding my rnd thank you sir thank you for giving thank you dr lakhani for your wonderful presentation and uh, you have shown uh, the the correct usage of uh, you know risk uh, uh, and uh, you have also highlighted uh, the products that uh, you and your team uh, uh, have uh, developed in uh, uh, in the past and uh, in the recent past as well uh, but uh, you know uh, one question that uh, is bothering me you know you have you know given so much of uh, 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 knowledge about different kinds of products uh, technologies but uh, you know at the end in the end also you mentioned that uh, some of these can reduce uh, you know co2 emission but what is what what is the that, that percentage uh, reduction in decarbonization uh, that uh, your technologies uh, uh, will uh, lead to you know so so that you know we are aware that yes uh, with this uh, material uh, your technology will reduce 1% 2% 3% 4% like that so do you have any answer on this yeah actually this this has led to 25 to 30% of carbon reduction in these products okay. we have seen because since okay. we are using very less amount of cement here and we are replacing this as cement also so okay. in this 25 to 30% of cement reduction is there uh -huh. very good and uh, one more thing after uh, coming for this uh, uh, after doing all this work we are now at present we are doing work with uh, marble waste also as well as with granite waste and we have two mof project running right now in which we are using this marble waste for developing wall panels bigger size wall panels this is for uh, the uh, appraisal for this industry thank you madam for uh, your wonderful uh, presentation and your you. the question uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen although we are a little late uh, but uh, uh, now uh, we missed uh, due to some network issue dr neeraj jain's uh, presentation so uh, he is sitting beside me so over to you dr neeraj for your uh, rest of the presentation thank you sir uh, so I, we were discussing about the alpha alpha plaster uh, which has been developed using the phosphor, phosphor gypsum, which is a phosphoric acid industrial waste. So this uh, alpha plaster is developed first by autoclaving uh, and uh, heating it at 140 degrees centigrade. It is a hydrothermal process. This alpha plaster has uh, very good compressive strength that is more than 25 MP and low uh, consistency. This alpha plaster can be used for high strength binders, casting and dental plasters and sculptures. So we have developed the high strength binder using this alpha plaster uh, by adding some mineral additives like fly ash, slag, lime slag, marble dust, etc. And the, the, the uh, main pro major properties of these binders is uh, high compressive strength that is about 35 MPa and setting time was in between the 20 to 50 uh, minutes. And uh, the water deoption was less than 6%. So this binder can be used for exterior as well as interior purpose. So next uh, binder which we have developed using the fluorogypsum. Fluorogypsum is a waste of hydrofluoric acid industry uh, and it has acidic, uh, it is acidic in, in nature. So first uh, it has to be neutralized by adding the lime and then it has been uh, uh, intergrinding with chemical activators for the development of fluorogypsum binder. This binder is also having very high strength of 35 MPa and low water adsorption. This uh, can be used for exterior as well as interior purpose and this technology has been transferred to Messrs. Nami Fluorine Limited in um, um, 2015. So the, a, a, a pilot plant of three-ton capacity was also installed at Sudas by Namin Florin, uh, Namin Florin. And they are developing this uh, binder uh, at a large scale. Uh, this uh, fluorogypsum binder is also used for development of flooring tiles and wall plastering as well as hollow blocks as per BIS standard methods. So next binder which we have developed is the high strength plaster using FGT gypsum. FGT gypsum is generated from the coal based thermal power plants using uh, de de uh, the For, for uh, development of uh, this plaster, this FGT gypsum is converted into the heavy added plaster by uh, calcination at 150 centigrade and then it is uh, uh, blended with the uh, uh, OPC and flyers uh, uh, and activators for the development of this uh, high strength uh, plaster. This high strength plaster has uh, a strength of uh, about 15 MPa and uh, uh, consistency of 40 40 percent this this plaster can be used for um, exterior as well as interior interior purpose uh, the major benefit features of this uh, plaster are good workability 
रास्ते फ्री फ्रॉम श्रिंकेज लो थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी हाई स्ट्रेंथ हाई ड्यूरेबिलिटी फायर रेजिस्टेंट एंड सो ऑन दिस हाई स्ट्रेंथ प्लास्टर कैन बी यूज इन द नीड फॉर एज वेल एज इन वाई एज इन द सीमेंट सैंड विद एज ए मोटर बाई एडिंग सैंड इन वन इंस्टू टू रेशियो so next uh, uh, plaster which we have developed from fgt gypsum is uh, uh, gypsum uh, vermiculite plaster this vermiculite plaster is a lightweight plaster which can be used for the interior purpose Wait, this is sir, very low sir kahi to tha this uh, <laughs> compression this has low compression yeah. and uh, consistency is about uh, 60% this is also having the uh, features like uh, low thermal conductivity eco friendly does not require water for curing and low shrinkage so this this the technology is also uh, ready for the uh, transfer next uh, plaster uh, which we have developed is high volume flyers composite uh, plaster uh, as we know that india about 2 50 million tons of flyers is generated from the uh, as by product from the thermal power plants which is having a disposal problems so uh, in this work we have developed this high volume flyers plaster and about 60 to 70% of this uh, high uh, volume of flyers is utilized for development of this uh, plaster using pop um, uh, and opc cement activators were also blended with these materials the major uh, properties of this plaster is uh, compressive strength is more than 8 mpa water adsorption is less than 14% and consistency is 55 to uh, sorry 40 to 55% uh, and the major features are it is a premix plaster high workability lightweight plaster low shrinkage and high durability and this can be used as a single coat plaster or uh, as a mortar by addition of the uh, sand <laughs> थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू डॉक्टर नीरज जैन फॉर योर वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटेशन यू हैव हाईलाइटेड द टेक्नोलॉजीज uh alternative technologies uh, uh, particularly for uh, uh, internal and external plaster so uh, uh, i'm sure uh, uh, in the in the coming years uh, uh, you will have uh, more such uh, uh, you know uh, uh, materials and technologies uh, uh, from cbri in this direction uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, uh, we now are at the end of uh, 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 you know uh, this uh, webinar uh, so i would like to ask uh, uh, the audience uh, or the host if there are any questions uh, uh, one or two i will be uh, uh, very happy to take those questions uh, and ask speakers so palad dikshit uh, uh, can i have a list of questions host uh, can you hear me yes so i will yeah. share yeah please share these questions and uh, in the meantime uh, i was having few questions to dr lp singh because of the network uh, we missed uh, uh, him uh, and uh, uh, dr lp you know uh, you talked about uh, 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 two very very important uh, technologies you know internal fuel and uh, uh, this uh, high strength concrete uh, using uh, you know nano steel uh, so uh, and you also mentioned about uh, emerging technologies on co2 utilization and uh, 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 construction uh, sector so uh, please highlight uh, where do you see india's uh, uh, you know big sector uh, in the coming years and uh, and also how these will lead to uh, some percentage reduction or to towards uh, you know decarbonization sir am i audible now 
Yeah, you can come little closer to your mic. Yeah, my mic is very smart. When it comes to question answer, it automatically <laughs> stops. Uh, so you have asked question about the uh, brick sector. Uh, you know, yeah. sir, uh, brick manufacturing is basically a traditional technology, and we have more than hundred thousand brick kilns in the. So uh, traditional technology. So any intervention that we want. As I think we have lost again. Can't hear you. You can increase your why. You know why is uh, uh, clear. Little clear now. No. Now. I think you are using caller mic, right? Anyway, we can't. We can't hear you. I'll be sorry. <laughs> so, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, three questions. You know, one question is uh, on uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, yes. I'm getting question. There's a question from uh, Mr. Tarun Jami. Uh, the clarification is required from uh, 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 Dr. Saurabh uh, Deep Gupta. How is biochar capturing atmospheric carbon? Dr. Gaur Gupta, Saurabh Gupta, are you there? Saradeep Gupta, can you hear me? Okay, uh, there's a question to Dr. L.P. Singh. Uh, Tanuja Singh is asking, is there any development on uh, using bricks from plastic? Dr. L.P. Singh? Dr. Karade, can you respond this, to this question? Uh, yes, uh, not in CBRI, but in uh, some other institute, our sister lab, NPL also, they have attempted uh, to make uh, uh, plastic as filler in making bricks. And yes. uh, they have uh, made a demo building, de demo house also with that. So uh, yeah. some other student uh, projects are also done uh, in some other yes. institute, and uh, that's possible. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Dr. Rade. Yeah, I was also having a similar answer to this question. Uh, uh, thank you for responding to this question. Uh, uh, Professor Saradeep, are you there? I think he has left. Uh, uh, Maybe we can send him uh, through mail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, just let me see his, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Saradeep. Uh, uh, let me see. I think he must have left. Uh, uh, he, uh, there is another question, uh, uh, Gaurav Dean. He uh, says, kindly suggest waste which can be utilized for uh, high-grade concrete uh, above M60, M70, M80, M90, and so on. Uh, Dr. Professor S.K. Singh. Uh, Professor S.K. Singh. Are you there? Dr. L.P. Singh? Madam Lakhani? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, the suggested waste which can be utilized for high grade concrete, right? Like uh, M60, M70, M80, and M90, and so on. Yeah, on the base on basis of our research work which we have done we have used this stone waste even marble waste and granite waste put a stone waste we have used and we have developed the concrete up to m60 m70 even m80 we had gone m80 tuck we yeah, have done great, but not great, here for great. m90 great thank you so much uh, for responding to this question uh, as far as uh, uh, Krishnamurti is concerned, he is asking that which is the right uh, and cost effective electrolyzer for uh, green hydrogen production. Uh, uh, is there any answer from anybody, uh, any speakers? Because I don't see Dr. Saurabhdi Gupta. Uh, can anyone answer, respond to this question? Otherwise, we'll respond by email. For Tarun Jami also, because how is biochar capturing atmospheric carbon? So 
uh, we'll be writing this uh, this question to Dr. Uh, Swaradeep Gupta. So uh, we'll be answering uh, that question through email. So, so ladies and gentlemen, now we do not have uh, uh, more questions. Uh, we are already late by around uh, uh, around ten minutes, uh, and uh, uh, now I will hand over the mic uh, to. Hello, to uh, uh, engineer Rajesh Kumar. Rajesh, are you there? Yes, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yes, over to you now for proposing a vote of thanks. Uh, uh, before that, uh, uh, you know, before you propose a vote of thanks, quick question from any industry or in, in any industry uh, who would like to join hands with CVRI or with CSIR on any of the uh, topics that have been presented or uh, highlighted? Can you write in the chat box? Please write that in the chat box so that uh, uh, before close, we should know that yes, uh, you are the people who want more information on the technologies that have been presented or that those have, uh, have been highlighted by our keynote speakers. Uh, now, uh, over to you, uh, Rajesh, for uh, uh, proposing a vote of thanks. Yeah. Yes, am I audible, sir, right now? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, sir. So, I think, sir, there is no question from yeah. industry, etc. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. So, uh, good afternoon, uh, one and all presented. Uh, it is my privilege to propose the vote of thanks uh, and acknowledge the contribution of those who work really to make this event possible. Myself, Rajesh Kumar Sharma, on behalf of CSIR CBRI and the entire fraternity of the institution, extend my sincere thanks to the Almighty for making today's event possible. We are very thankful to Ministry of Science and Technology and Ministry of Earth Sciences for conceiving the State of iConnect event on the occasion of Ajadika Amrit Mahotsav. This was indeed, indeed given us the platform today to showcase the CSIR technology for the strategic and societal application under CIE theme. We would like to extend our sincere gratitude to Dr. Rakesh Kumar, uh, former director CSIR Niri, uh, for giving the keynote lecture on decarbonizing India opportunities and challenges. The talk dwelt on some of the important aspects of mitig mitigation in uh, ur urban areas, different options for mitigation strategy, etc. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, we would also like to extend our sincere gratitude to Dr. Swaradeep Gupta, Associate Professor, IISC Bangalore, for giving the keynote lecture on carbon sequestering technology and digital manufacturing of construction materials. The talk discussed basically important aspects such as carbon sequestration in normal and lightweight building materials, biochar as a carbon sequestering material, additive manufacturing, etc. We would like to thank all the scientists and experts in the panel who delivered technical talk on different important areas and showcasing the te developed technology here at CSIR CBRI such as low energy clinkers by Professor S. K. Singh, research initiative in low carbon building material, Dr. L. P. Singh, hemp concrete by Dr. S. R. Karade, binders from waste gypsum by Dr. Neeraj Jain, and value added building materials from stone waste by Dr. Mrs. Rajni Lakhani. So thank you everyone, uh, sirs and madams, madam for uh, uh, your important high insights. We do place our sincere gratitude to different participants from industries uh, in today's event, that is iConnect 40, the representative from the industries and other stakeholders interested in our technology are uh, requested to get in touch through our web portal for the follow-up interaction, such as uh, uh, for technology transfer, uh, for uh, know-how, etc. Lastly, uh, but not least, thanks are due to all the organizing member of iConnect 40 who worked uh, with the active guidance of Director CSIR CBRI, Dr. Anjan Ray, along with Dr. Asuk Kumar, sir, outstanding scientist, CSIR CBRI. So thank you, sir. And finally, we thank you all for being with us. 
हैव ए ग्रेट डे अहेड एक बार सभी को पुनः बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सादर नमस्कार थैंक यू राजेश फॉर योर वंडरफुल वोट ऑफ थैंक्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन विद दिस वी क्लोज दिस सेशन एंड ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ सी बी आर आई एंड माई ओन पर्सनल बिहाफ डॉक्टर अशोक कुमार एक्सटेंड वेरी मच थैंक्स टू एंटायर फर्टनिटी हु हैव ज्वाइंड दिस इवेंट फ्रॉम ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड i am sure uh, the the time is uh, there where we'll have more such occasions to meet you all and listen to to many speakers and also will also have more occasions where more industries will uh, will come to cbri uh, and to other csi laboratories for uh, uh, for uh, a very important topic that we have discussed today on decarbonizing india and opportunities for uh, innovative technologies for Uh, sustainable development and uh, with this uh, uh, thank you very much each one of you uh, for sparing your valuable time uh, this uh, uh, for noon uh, have a nice day and uh, please take uh, good care of your uh, health uh, and uh, uh, wonderful time ahead thank you bye bye namaskar dhanyawad sasrikal ada over to you palak uh, dikshit uh, over to you the host uh, yes sir you can leave now thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you sir uh you hope you must have uh, uh, recorded your this thing yes sir so, so, so kindly share that uh, later on with me sure. thank you very much thank you uh, i would like to uh, finally thank uh, the host uh, palak dikshit uh, 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 which uh, rajesh men men miss missed you know so uh, i would like to uh, uh, convey my regards and thanks to palak uh, dikshit and uh, her team for uh, uh, organizing uh, this uh, uh, meeting as a tech solutions uh, thank you very much thank you sir thank you.